Franny, and I thought a good way to kick off our project car here would be to do a quick walk around and kind of talk about some of the things that we want to accomplish on the car. Now, right off the bat, you could do three things if you had a car. One, you could just drive it. That's always great fun, right? And just as is, and that's what we've been doing with this car for years. Or you can refresh it, which is what we're planning on doing with the car. And that means probably a paint job, some minor body work, minor engine work, that sort of thing or you can do a full restoration. That can get very, very expensive, and for some of these cars, the valuation's gone up enough to where it can actually support it, like the little 356s and things. So this is a 1986 32 Carrera, which means it's the last year for the old 915 transmission. The 87s and on up got a better transmission, the G50 transmission. But the nice thing about the one that's in this car, the 915, is that they're a lot cheaper to rebuild, and we have a few little issues with our transmission. So let me go ahead and start in the back. We'll, we'll kind of work our way forward and talk about some of the things we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and pop the boot here for you so we've got a little bit of context. Our engine back here has about 116,000 miles or so on it. Now these 3.2 Carrera engines are bulletproof. They are super duper solid. But at this part, this about this part in your age, I think um, not a bad idea if you've got the engine out for something else, that probably a good idea to go ahead and do the heads on the engine. Just do a top end. The bottom end is still super solid at this point. You can see some increased oil usage and things in the car. And so we're looking at like valves, valve guides, valve seats that sort of thing. Uh, also, one of my cylinders over here, the one in the middle on the left, number five, is very tight to get the spark plug in and out of, and terrible wants to terribly cross-thread itself every time. So that's something that kind of drives me nuts. So I'd love to get that sort of chased, maybe get a helicoil put in there so it's a lot easier to deal with, maintenance for the spark plugs and things. Also, I'd like to kind of brighten it up a little bit. It looks pretty dingy, huh? We've got like the old plating and things here. This is, should be like a yellow CAD plating. You kind of see it all over here, here. That this was strap. yellow? Yeah, this was a yellow CAD plating. And it looks kind of silvery, huh? Uh, it yeah. looks flat and boring. You and can kind of see here that strap up there and that. That's what they look like when they're uh, fairly original. But we've got a strap here that's almost silver. This one is com almost completely silver. And then what do you think of the fan too, huh? It, it needs a little bit of love there too, huh? I think the general condition of the engine is pretty good. It looks pretty good to me. It's not bad. It's fairly clean. The engine really doesn't leak much oil. It's really solid. Starts right up. This is kind of my daily driver. So it works pretty well, but we're really getting all getting into all of this for the transmission. So for the transmission, we've got to replace some of the synchros. We've got our third, fourth is just kind of a little bit misaligned. Let me cut in a little segment here from Chad, a friend of ours who has one of these cars that he races. And I had him go ahead and drive the car and give me his feedback on it a little bit. Well, these 915s, I mean, you know, they're, they're just a maintenance item. You gotta think of them like tires. And uh, when, when they start making uh, a fuss, it's just better to just, to deal just with do it. Just mm -hmm. get it out, get it fixed. And I love these cars. Aren't they amazing? Yeah. Oh, so I yeah. could feel third. Okay. And you had said before that you felt that third and fourth were slightly out of plane with each other. Right. Like there's a slight bend or, or a twist in the fork. It, 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 it could be... Uh, could be a fork issue or it could just be a you know it's just set wrong on the forks mm -hmm. and the other thing is you know when you shift just let it go in just on its own exactly the way you know don't hit you you don't want to ham fist it but just on a time basis you should just do it yeah there i think so too are you um, How's the engine sound? It sounds feels, good. Yeah, yeah, feels good. Yeah. And the suspension, what do you think? The suspension feels good. Okay. Yeah. The brakes all right? Yeah. Yeah. So that bit's all good. I mean, for a street car, it's great. Yeah. My contention is this car has good bones. It does. It has really good bones. Good. Yeah, I think if, I mean, if you got the paint done and, you know, got all the little 
cosmetic even like the seals and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I think your car is a really nice car. Yeah. I mean, underneath it looks really good. Okay, now I want you to feel something. So, uh, go ahead and shift that up into third. Do you feel that when, when you go to from neutral into third, you feel a little bit of, it's a little more work to get it in? Yep, yep. Okay, that's that, where Burst is going from third, if you go third to fourth, now go fourth. Yeah. See how fourth goes in really easy? Yep. So that's that um, friction ring I was talking about. Okay, all the, right. The one in third, isn't slowing the it isn't synchronizing the shafts fast enough meaning it's not generating enough friction okay so that's why it's taking longer for it to get to the right speed before you go in okay that versus makes sense. uh the fourth gear synchronizer is good you don't even really use the synchronizer if you're shifting a red line it's it's more the like in traffic stuff where you're off speed like if, you know oh, if you hit 5,000 right. rpms mm -hmm. and shift as the thing hits four, you'll never use the synchronizers because literally the shafts just match. Like that's just that's just shaft match right there. Uh, so that's good to know. Yeah, well, most of the gears are a thousand RPMs apart. So if you get your shift in in that whatever that thousand RPM spot every time, you don't even really the shafts are already right at that right spot and it goes right in. Yeah, it makes good power. Yeah, it pulls nicely, yeah. I think. So there's just a few things we want to get done on that transmission as well. So like you said, the synchros and um, just make sure the gears are good. But I've also got a bit of a rumble. When I let go of the clutch and the engine's good and warm, I can hear a little bit of a rumble. And that could be the throw out bearing. It's what kind of what I'm hoping it is. Or it could be something bad inside the transmission. Kind of hoping it's not that, like bad bearings or something. So since the transmission has to come out, might as well pull the engine and the transmission together. So that's going to be one of the earlier things we do on the car. So let's step around and take a look at some of the other things we'd like to get done on the car. So generally the body's in pretty good shape I'd have to say but the paint's kind of a mess. We've got issues all over the car. This is just a little example. I don't know how well it's going to show up but it's been burned through here. It's been buffed all the way through. This particular door on the car has actually original paint on it and this is single part paint too so there's no clear coat over this but looking all over the car there's all these sorts of things all over it there's a little dent over here that we're going to have to get out there's just tons of things everywhere on the car down in the bottom i'm seeing a little teeny bit of something going on here and that hopefully is just surface rust but we want to check that out and in here as well you can kind of see a little bit of surface rust down in here. So we want, to, we want to check that and make sure that that's not a big deal. We also have a lot of the trim molding and stuff in here. It just looks like this. Look at this. Oh, yeah, that's this really is, bad. Yep, right? So that's a mess here. Uh, our screws are kind of old and rusty looking. This stuff is pulling up. Our interior is just looking very tired as well. Looking around the rest of the car, we can see in lots of areas like this is a pretty good example here. Look at this. This is kind of crazy. So this has obviously been repainted over the top of this and it's peeling up here. And I would say there's probably, hear that? I think this is a clear coat sitting on top of this as well. And so this is just no good. That's got to be, that's got to be Look at that, that's just coming apart. So that's not good either. And look at this here. I mean, this is just, this is a mess. They didn't even bother to take the, the badge off, which is so that's easy really to bad. do. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's, yeah. And it looks like here a drip or and, something. well, it's, it's actually. It's not it's, a drip. It's not no, a drip. this is the original paint underneath and some crappy paint over the top of it. The paint job on this car is terrible. Well, what about the body itself though? That's a great question. I think it's very, very solid. And I think the car is really straight. The bonnet lines still look great on the car. All the seams around the car look good. All the gaps look good all the way wow. through here. They're all the same distance and up here. Yep, all of these look really good. There's nothing on the car that tells me that it's been pranged on one side or another. So that's an important thing to look at. Real quick, what I want to do is pop the hood on the car 
And we'll take a look at some of the internals of this, just so you can see, because there's no way that that would get fixed properly if the car had been hit. So it's a good way to just determine where you are with the car. So let me go ahead and pop this and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So underneath the bonnet here, we'll pull the carpet back so we can kind of see a bit more. Now this is our gas tank and the spare tire actually sits almost like in it in sort of like this well and the, and the gas tank's kind of interesting. These cars have a huge gas tank. They have kind of crappy gas mileage, like somewhere around the 20s, but they want a decent range. So they have really big gas tanks. So looking back here and pulling more of this, what we're looking for in these areas down in here are some crumples. If you were gonna have an accident repaired on one of these cars, of course they'd get the fender right and the wing up here and the light and all that. But one thing they probably wouldn't fix would be some of these internal pieces and you'd see ripples in them. And what we're also looking for are some of the original spot welds and things here as well, just to make sure that this hasn't been hit really hard. So we can see some of these welds here here, 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 these sorts of things. These are obviously original welds. Looking down in the base here, underneath the battery, we're looking for a lot of rust or something down there that's gonna, that's caused a lot of damage. And this is very clean, it's not rusty down there. The area down in the very front of the car here, which would be the most susceptible to any type of real damage, looks perfect on this car. Looks great. Everything looks original. It doesn't look like it's ever been pranged. The gas tank is fitting where it should fit. I want to see if I can get in there to show it. It's a little hard, huh? Yeah, but it looks good. Okay. This, is, this has been upgraded. This is part of the air conditioning system, and that has been upgraded. But it's important to check underneath here and to look at all the parts to make sure that they're original. Another thing to look for on these cars is this. This is the option sticker, the original option sticker for the car. So if the car's been repainted or this is not the original hood, this option sticker is not going to be there. So that's another indication that you've got one of the original parts of the car. Somewhere around 04, 05, 06, something like that, they got away from the, uh, the option stickers under the bonnet, which is kind of a thing. But it's a quick way to tell because you've got all the numbers on here too. You've got your engine, transmission codes, you've got uh, other, all the other, the chassis number, all sorts of stuff. So you can tell if this lines up with the actual car. Great, really, really great to always check underneath the bonnet here and see if the car's really worth it. Now, if we had found a bunch of crumpled up metal in the front here and all kind of beat up and busted up, you know what? I wouldn't bother. I just wouldn't bother. I did this car as a nice driver. I might pull the transmission to kind of do a little work on it, maybe a little bit on the engine, but other than that, I wouldn't bother with any type of body work or probably even the interior work. And the reason is because you're just not gonna get your money out of it at the end. The first time somebody goes in, takes a look at an inspection, they'll see all that work in the front and you'll get, they'll be like, mm, there's too many other cars that just don't have all that damage. So anyway, this car is beautiful. It's in great shape. It's just a little old and tired. So I think we can fix that. A few other things trim wise on the car, on the exterior of the car, not a fan of these, huh? These things are about ugly. They're big, huge, goofy things for the American market, and just not, not very. Um, something weird has happened with this bumper strip as well. It's sort of pushed itself out. I don't know if you can see, see, do you see how it's like all, it's weird, the bolts are there. I don't know what's going on it's there. It's kind of hard for, I don't know how well everybody can see that. Yeah, yeah so it is coming out. It's coming apart. So that needs to be fixed as well. We have lots of little body bits all over the car. Now this, tail on the car is from Chad's car actually and so is the deck lid itself and you'll notice that they don't line up down here they're off a little bit so I've got an alignment issue there I need to deal with and it's it's just not quite exactly perfect so I'm gonna have to work on that a little bit I don't think it's the end of the world go ahead and get that fixed as well lots of little things like this all over the car well, obviously a decent amount of work to be done on the car and like I said we're just going to do a refresh not a complete restoration like a concourse level level restoration what we're looking for in the end is a very nice looking driver car we have to we have to think about the paint are we gonna get a two-part paint we're we gonna get clear coat over it or not I'm kind of leaning along that 
those those lines just because it will be a lot easier to take care of and I think it's easier for the paint shops to actually do a two-part paint there's gonna be a lot of stuff along the way that we didn't account for and we didn't think about we want to do a suspension refresh on the car as well it's it's fine the front struts have been replaced but the rear shocks are really old and I think they're old Bilsteins but more so the bushings and things this is a torsion bar suspension in the front and in the rear and this this model year so I want to get the uh, bushings and things they kind of creak if this car ever gets a little bit of water underneath it you'll notice it for a couple of days you hear this creak 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 and that drives me crazy obviously all those bushings need to be replaced we have a broken anti sway bar mount on the let's see it's on this side so on the left side of the car it's common on these cars they use the same mounts as they did on the SC's years ago but they increase the diameter of the roll bar and it puts a bit of more force on it and they tend to snap we've already had the right one replaced so the left one is now snapped so that's gonna be probably I think the first thing we get done just because we need the car to be able to drive it down there we need it still running next I think what we're gonna do is pull the engine and transmission and see what we're in for for all that separate the two of those when the transmission is going to go off to the shop the engine will put up on a stand pull the heads off and send those out and any other more fuss with that and all the bits that we wanted to make pretty we'll get that done and then as that's sort of sitting and sort of percolating. I think we're going to end up sort of disassembling the car next. I think that's probably what's going to happen. We've got to take the interior out. We've got to take all the bits off the exterior and then send the car off to get it painted. I don't know what kind of prep work we're going to have to do. We'll have to figure all that out. It's going to kind of be a ton of work, I would imagine. Chad said he'd help us. He did. Chad said he would help us. He's like, oh, I can totally tell you how to prepare your car. Great. Awesome. Because <laughs> this is actually our first restoration job that we've done. I mean, we've done little things on all the cars to make them a little bit prettier and this and that, but this is a big project for us. I think it's gonna be kind of cool though. And then the car she'll come back from paint. We'll go ahead and, and reassemble all the interior stuff and get it all good and get the engine put back together and the transmission put back in and put the car. I mean, it's gonna be pretty cool. I'm really excited. About it. I think it'll be super fun. So, um, all right, so that is the project for our little 86 911. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you got any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below. Now, you're gonna wanna make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell icon down there so you get notified because we're gonna have lots of episodes on this and it's just gonna kinda go on and on. So it's gonna be a lot of fun and you won't wanna miss any of the episodes. So. All right, so thank you so, so much for watching and a special thank you as always to our Patreon supporters. And until next time, safe travels, bye.